We are a forage only farm. Alan Taylor, little lady with a great challenge in front of her. This is Flo! Baby Flo! <laughs> she wins the world championship. And the winner's circle for that cowgirl. Alan Taylor will win. She's riding an amazing horse out of Baby Flo. One of the babies for Baby Flo. For Lucy to Flo. Flo, Flo. Hush, buddy. Hush, buddy. What's up, Flomies? Welcome back to my channel. You guys have like badgered Cody and I and every social media platform we have when I've just casually said like we are a forage only farm. And I, I didn't expect for this to go as crazy as it's gone, but let's talk about it. So we are a forage only farm and the main reason is this little guy right here. Now, this was surgically removed from Baby Flo after she had won two world titles and over a million dollars. This is called an intralith and it weighs right now 14 ounces, 14.25 ounces, but when it was removed, it re weighed right at 16 ounces over time. It's begun to shrink a little bit. I wanted to get to the bottom of this. Now, simultaneously, my mom was put in the hospital and we lost my mom due to a battle with cancer in 25 days. So I had a multitude of questions between this and my mother and I found a lot of things that I could answer. I am not an equine nutritionist, I'm not a vet. You should consult everybody in your life that you would trust more, but let me just tell you based off my experience and watching performance horses not live as long as they used to, I have been able to answer a lot of questions for myself. So this is not advice to you, seek your own answers. I'm simply looking at what works for me and my farm and what I've found to improve everything. So we have to kind of change the way that we're thinking about horse feeds. The first thing that we think when we see a bag of something really expensive with a shiny bag and a really good picture is it says protein, fat, da 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 da. The same as supplements on our shelf. What I had to learn for myself was that that's essentially the McDonald's of food for me, what I've found. So what I mean by that is every single diet that you'll find when you're suffering with any kind of illness or problem is that you will be prescribed organic whole foods. Now, why would that matter? You think that's probably not that big of a deal, but organic whole foods is essentially the multivitamin that God gave us. And so instead of supplementing, everybody wants supplement, 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 supplement. It's kind of like looking at a horse that you say, oh, what kind of drills can I do? Instead of asking, what better foundation can I put on my horse? It's the same thing. So instead of how can I supplement all of these various things, it's how can I get my horse the most bioavailable whole food that I possibly can so that I don't have to supplement anything? Multivitamins were created for humans back in the day when we had impoverished nations that didn't have access to whole foods. So they packaged them and synthesized vitamins down really tiny. And here's the deal. As a person that has the MTHFR gene, it's, you can Google it, it's a whole thing. My body does not like synthesized B vitamins. So I have to find those in organic whole foods or else I won't be able to get them because my body, I can take them this way and my body never gets them. They're never bioavailable. So the same with our horses. I had to learn through a process of really traumatic things that I need to feed my horses the most organic whole foods I possibly can. And my problem with organic is that it's really hard to find crops that don't have glyphosate, which is Roundup. Now we even find in infants when they're born, they have glyphosate already in their body from the foods that we eat that have been sprayed with Roundup and chemicals. So we're never gonna avoid all of these things. We're never gonna avoid microplastics, but we can do the very best that we possibly can at finding really good bioavailable foods. So we are feeding hay, the best hay that we can find, and because there are different nutrients in every single different type of forage or grass, we are feeding a multitude of different grasses and hays and have different access to grass simply because that's how we're gonna get these whole vitamins. That's why you're not gonna see me supplementing a lot of things. Now I do supplement with Redmond Rock Salt for all of the horses, and now I do have a um, supplement with the I am feeding like a Vermont blend supplement inside. I can show you guys that, but I got a mains and minerals test done on my horses after I was already starting this and found huge traces of lithium and aluminum in my horses. Now we're talking about horses here. They don't shower with shower gel. They don't have carcinogenic things that they put on their bodies like beauty products and shampoo and hair dye and all of these things. So if I'm finding high traces of aluminum and lithium, we've got to take a closer look. And what I found was the majority of everything was in my water. So we have inline water filters and a filtration system on the house 
house. Now in the house, we already have spring water delivered and our shower heads have already been changed. But in the horse barn, um, we thought that our filtration system was doing enough and it's not. So we have an inline filtration system and we have water strip tests coming and a whole water study that we'll share with you guys at another time. And we fill the RV up with this filtered water and we try our best to find filtered water wherever we go. And remember, filtered does not mean purified. Purified means that it, they took a water-like substance, cleaned it as good as they can, filter it back out to make it look clean, and that is purified water. And I can go down a whole rabbit hole with you there. Spring water is different than purified water, and that's a, just a whole other deal. So basically, what I'm trying to do is have the very best diet I possibly can. And what I've found is that this is a lot cheaper. So if I'm feeding my horses the filet mignon of foods, which is various different kinds of forages that they would find naturally, they're not in the wild finding oils and all of these various things that we find in food, high sugar and molasses and all of these things that we find in, in our packaged foods. Plus, a lot of times we can't control the mold or the temperature, the truck it was on to get there. Same thing with hay, but it's a little bit easier when you bust a bale of hay open to know what's inside and if we should feed it or not. So here are the different feeds that we feed here. I have a coastal round bale out for our horses at all time, and then they are grazing on Bermuda grass. Now in the barn, I have compressed Timothy bales because these have a different set of nutrients than my alfalfa bales do. So I have these compressed Timothy bales, and then I have these big, pretty leafy alfalfa bales. Also behind me, I have hay cubes, alfalfa cubes. I would love to start getting alfalfa Timothy cube mix. I like to feed cubes, we do soak our cubes. It doesn't matter if you do or don't. There's various studies both ways, but for our peace of mind, we just think let's just soak them a little bit. I think I'm gonna go away from the cubes when we run out of this big load. We bought a semi truck full, and I'm gonna start just going to a mix of hay and no more cubes. The reason is my cubes come in giant totes, and I'm not really able to see exactly how much moisture is settling at the bottom where I can keep these hay bales a little bit more dry and I can order them smaller quantities. So if I don't like that batch, I can do something about it. But if I order a truckload of cubes, then I have to really worry about moisture getting into my barn or various other things happening. So for instance, we have a horse that is a hard keeper. Hush Money is a very, very hard keeper. And I love the comments saying, try this grain, try that grain. Yes, I know that for a short term payoff, I can load her up with sugar and carbs and make her look a little bit better to the eye, but I'm never reaching that root problem. And I don't wanna lose her early or end her career early. So now that I know what these types of chemicals and oils do to humans, and I've seen it firsthand, I want to take a really close look. So I'm having a mains and minerals test done on Hush Money. I'll be sure to share those results with you guys. I'm already making the changes, assuming that she's got some lithium and aluminum in her system. So changing the water, changing everything around, making sure I'm buying the very best quality forages that I can find. Again, I can spend more money on hay and the quality of hay that I'm finding because I'm not buying grain. The other thing you need to look for if you are gonna find alfalfa cubes, let's say hay is not readily available where you are, so you're having to buy cubes, just make sure that they don't have a lot of binders. A lot of people put a binder in their alfalfa cube, and so it makes it that your horse is ingesting something that you don't really know what it is. Also, a lot of microplastics have been found in some hay cubes, and I don't know if you guys saw on Facebook a while back, but a hay cube company had some really massive stuff go wrong. Not that that's a case for every single company. I'm happily feeding hay cubes, and my horses are really really, really happy, but I just think in the future, it's a little bit less practical for me because I do have hay readily available here. So to answer your question all the way around, one, do some research. Google vegetable oil, canola oil, all sorts of oils. I want you to Google those and I want you to look at your feed. I want you to Google what those things do. I also want you to know that I'm breeding my horses a lot, and so I'm really looking into soy because it's a major hormone disruptor. If you guys don't already know, I had a really hard time getting pregnant, and so I had to look at every single thing in my diet. So between my mom, my horse, and myself, I had to really look into what it is that I was ingesting so that I could give myself a really great chance at not only a healthy quality life, but also a chance at having a baby, which I finally did. So take a look, just Google, is vegetable oil talk? And what you're going to find is that it's low-key motor oil. And so when you put sludge in food and you ingest it, you're going to get problems that you don't really 
know how to deal with. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, am I sponsored by anybody? And it is no. Have I been sponsored by amazing companies? Absolutely. And I loved their products at the time. And now as I make changes, I have zero sponsorships. So I am able to be so insanely transparent. These are the hay bags I use that you guys went nuts for. Isn't she cute? She's a little gal. Now I would only use this for like a day trip. This would not hold enough hay for me. She's called a hangover hay net. I don't have a code. I don't have a link. Um, I've had a little bit of a hard time finding these. These are amazing. If I get a code or something, I will for sure tell you guys. But the, this is the gal that I use. She's a big girthy heifer. And here's what I do. A lot of you guys, a lot of you guys ask this question. Okay, but how do you feed it? What are you feeding? How do I gain a top line? My horse looks so good on XYZ grain. I just can't pull them off. Just like with Hush Money, she looked really, really great in 2021. We were loading her up on carbs and sugar, and then when we took her off, she doesn't look nearly as good. And here's why. I have some sort of deficiency that I need to get to the root of, and I'm spending the money to do that instead of spending the money on faking myself out, thinking that my horse looks great and feels great when her eye is no brighter and there's more that I could do. So that being said, Here's, let me show you an example of a hay bag full. The question of how do I fill my horse's top line up? Feed more forage. Your horses are intended to graze all day long and eat 24 hours a day, basically. So this is full to the top every day, all day, all day. Out to here, like full. So what we do is we call it our athletic greens mix. We put some alfalfa, Timothy, and if they're not gonna be out on pasture and on that coastal round belt, we'll put coastal in here and then top it back off with alfalfa and boom, there you go. Now we introduced these blends slowly over time and pulled them off grain slowly over time. The question of how much hay should I feed my horse? The answer is yes. <laughs> what do I mean by that? Yes, more hay, more, always. They should never be out. They should be, have access to forage all of the time. Back in the day, we used to feed this much hay and then all this much grain. And the grain companies would tell us, look how much money I'm saving you in hay. Your horse only needs this much grain and one flake of hay and your horse is doing great. And all of our performance horses that we're seeing are having the most troubles they've ever, ever had. The main reason is when you turn to rich man conveniences, you get rich man diseases, which is an old African proverb. But after going through all of this stuff and things, I've learned that the more convenient that we try to make things, the more we run into the conveniences, what the conveniences cause, which you're always sacrificing something for another. I love this question. Here's the, here's the answer. Forage based does not mean forage. It simply means it's forage based. So after going through um, the different list of ingredients and things that may be a little bit disrupting to one of my horses, I decided it's probably best that we go forage all the way around instead of forage base that you may find in a lot of different feeds that you're using and they may work great, but you need to really look at how much forage versus other inflammatory ingredients. Again, if you're not willing to do the research, just turn this off now. But if you're willing to really look at labels and look through some things for yourself, you may find some answers as to why your horses are underperforming or their joints are stiff or various things. Not all horses are created equal, meaning that I did a main and minerals test on several horses in my barn. Some tested perfect and some were off the charts for some things with the exact same feeding routine. So one horse may doing, be doing really well and some horses may need some additives. Okay, before I show you an example of a hay bag, I just wanna tell you when you're cruising around my channel, you're seeing old videos, Look at the date on that video. I'm always evolving as a person, as we all are. And so I have fed various different ways. I mean, back in the day, in 2017, I was slamming white monsters morning, noon, and night, trying to starve off my, trying to chase off my hunger by chewing red trident gum 24 hours a day and getting way, way, way too thin in order to compete in a fitness competition. So as, you, as I've evolved, I've changed the way that I think, the way that I've researched things and what my goals are. So as you're cruising around my channel, just remember to look at the date of things and when I was doing certain things. Cause I've been doing this for a very long time, but um, you may peruse around on the channel and get caught up in a vlog that was from five years ago and not even know it. So with that being said, thank you for following me for this long because I'm sure you've seen me evolve from car with no AC to RV because it's been a big <laughs> jump of events that have happened between now and then. Now to get to our hay bag, this is the size of Cody. Um, this hay bag weighs a lot and this would be our normal day-to-day -day hay bag. Now Mojo would finish this entire bag. He looks great. Finish the entire bag where Hush Money finishes about half, three quarters of the bag 
um, and I keep this in front of her and then I just refill it. You'll see the majority of this bag is alfalfa. We have some Timothy in there, but she's kind of picked out the Timothy and um, I refilled alfalfa on top of it just so nothing in the trailer went to waste. Um, but this is how much I'm gonna give my horse and if they run out, I'm gonna give it to them again, just so you guys know. Also, I've done the research on what if we load these horses down with a whole bunch of hay and then go run them? Well, what I found is the study showed that a full horse is a fast horse. So it actually helps to keep their cortisol levels where they should be. And you don't get this spike and crash of these sugars that are in a lot of our feeds. So we try to make sure our horses are as full as possible before they run with this bad boy. Our version of trying to prevent a bleeder is having our horses in immaculate shape, making sure that they are very, very, very well conditioned for the job that we're gonna ask them to perform. And then we pull water just a couple hours before we run, just to make sure they're not gulping down a whole bunch of water um, right before. And then we give it to them immediately after. So here's what I use. Again, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm, I, I'm doing this based off of what my horses needed after I tested them. I test myself too. So blood draws, urine samples, all sorts of things just to see actually what we need. So here is what I have added to Baby Flow's routine. This is the Vermont Blend Forage Balancer and Hoof Supplement. It's got amino acids, biotins, uh, biotin prebiotic in here. You can check out that the ingredients are... Um, things that she needs that after we did a minerals exam, we figured out exactly what she needed. So I add that for um, her. I'm also using the cellular equine detox flush. Now this looks again, not spawned by any of these people. This looks like hippie soup. Like this looks like you could sell it on the corner in deep Ellum. Like this is, this is, this is some hippy dippy stuff. I do love the ingredients again. Um, and these are things that aren't performance based. So I'm not going to see a difference probably in the performance of my horse. I'm not looking for a difference in performance. What I'm looking for is a difference in their ease of reproduction, um, their coat, their energy levels, but I'm not necessarily looking for them to run harder or be calmer or any of these things that are being sold to us in supplements that they will do. Now in this supplement, this is no Lasix. This is silver lining herbs. Again, I really, really like um, the ingredients here. I know that none of these things are necessarily, um, inflammatory. One thing I used to feed her shepherd's purse instead of using like a Lasix or something like that. Shepherd's purse is in no Lasix. So it's got a whole bunch of other things. After I did a little bit more research about shepherd's purse, I realized that it needed to be grouped with some other things before it's actually bioavailable for that purpose. She hasn't bled, but she's not necessarily a bleeder. I just heard some coughing, wanted to try this because Mojo is a cougher. So I wanted to give this a shot. Again, probably not gonna see anything huge out of your horses that you're expecting. The reason that I want to talk about these things is I think the expectation is set that we will see some massive difference out of our horses after feeding. One, you have to feed something for 30 plus days before you even really start to see a change. It's like working out. So I think we live in a world, um, this generation wants instant gratification all the time, and that's just not what we're going to get. So I'm feeding these things with no expectation other than I want to see if this changes, and then I'm going to test and use science and say, did it do what I thought it would do and spend a little extra money there instead of money on these horrendously overpriced supplements that I don't think are really doing anything other than adding more inflammatory products into our horses. So hyaluronic acid, I have these capsules. They're 100 mg capsules from Amazon. I put three of these. I'm gonna burn one just so you guys know what I'm doing. And this is not medical advice. This is not advice for you to do for your horse. This is simply what I do. But I find that these have been proven to be more bioavailable than other forms of HA that you can give your horse. So I open it like this over my horse's feed and then dump it out onto the horse's feed and throw away this capsule. So if your horse eats it with the capsule, it's not gonna hurt anything. These are, they disintegrate, so no big deal. The other thing that I'm feeding for my fat source for Hush Money is ground flax. I know that she is doing a lot better with some ground flax added. Um, there's nothing super inflammatory like a rice bran or anything like that. So this is what I'm using for her. I'm doing a quarter cup a day. Um, for, or sorry, I'm doing a half a cup a day for her of the ground flax and then I'm wetting down her alfalfa cubes and all of that good stuff mixed together. So seems like a lot, but we're gonna make sure that we can fix that top line without being sold kind of a story that we're gonna feed all these things or it's in one magical bag and that I can feed that through my entire barn and I'm gonna have magical expectations. So instead of doing that, I'm gonna actually get to the root of the problem, test my horses, 
if I have to test my hay, I'm gonna do so, but we travel a lot, so we're gonna get inconsistent hay as we go. Um, I do like one brand that Tractor Supply sells, and that's the Stanley products. I really like them because I feel like they're very, very consistent across the board, depending on what store that you go to in Tractor Supply, you're probably gonna get the same product that's gone under really strict quality control instead of just going to somewhere local where you don't really know about blister beetles or how they fertilize or do they spray glyphosate on their crops or all sorts of different things that you may ask. So I know this was a long-winded explanation, but basically we're doing the best that we possibly can using the data that we can and I'm trying to spend my money so you don't have to, to get to the bottom of why am I feeding my horses XYZ products and they're simply not improving? Or why do I see this big jump in improvement where my horses look amazing and then start to have performance issues as it go time goes on? So I hope that this was super informative. Um, again, seek out your own answers. Be really curious. I think that that's my favorite part of being an adult is having a childlike curiosity and just always trying to get to the bottom of something. It's what really drives me. And I feel like based on you guys seeing my horses, we're winning, we're placing, we're doing great. And I think it can only get better from here to have them have a really, really happy life that has them going on for a long time. I've got True, my NFR horse, in the barn and he's 33 years old this year. So we're trying to do everything right that we possibly can. Also, check out your feed through parasite control, like feed through fly, like, oh, I'm gonna keep my flies off my horses with this feed through thing. Look into that too. I am not a vet. I don't have a degree. I don't have any of that stuff. So you guys take this with a grain of Redmond rock salt and, <laughs> and go check all of this information out for yourself. Maybe it would be something amazing for your barn. Maybe it won't, but either way, I feel like I've done the most amount of research for myself and these are the choices I've made for our farm. I hope this answers tons of your questions because this was really, really fun to kind of get off my chest and tell people. I just feel like we're being sold a lot of things that could potentially shorten our horses' careers. And if you're constantly Constantly having to inject your horses, check out why their joints are so inflamed. Again, Google vegetable oil. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed me on my soapbox. As always, please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up, a like, a comment below. I'm so, so extremely happy for all of the ways that you feed your horses, but I can promise you, um, once you look into it, you'll never go back. As always, you guys, don't forget to count your blessings, drink your protein, and say no to oil. <laughs> Bye.